and the policeman opened fire on him. What was he to do with that policeman? Give him a bouquet of flowers and kiss him on the cheeks for attempting to assassinate him? I don't understand these noises about dictatorship. Mr. President, Mr. President, there is a coup. I've never seen such an explosion of joy. Breathe in the air, the light that surrounds me. If we hold ourselves together, we'll go far. Hello, explorers. Here's a zero from OES Africa, and you are welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll continue our series on the untold trade about Africa. That's the part two. We continue the story of Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. For you to understand and appreciate this video, you can check the part one for more insights. If you've not seen that, I will include a link at the end of this video and in the description so you can check it out. Now, let's get into today's video. It wasn't long before that Kwame Nkrumah's regime started going through the mill. By declaring Ghana a one-party state, he was perceived as a dictator. So with a one-party system, everything became all Nkrumah, and that was wrong. But you see, that again is a total misunderstanding of African history. Almost all of the African states which broke away from the colonial yoke established one-party states. Do you think one-party state is good for democracy? If it wasn't democracy, then they should, they should have left us with their co colonial masters. They did not force us. I waited one day when it was a good, good mood alone. Then I said, so if, why do you want a one-party state? Then he said, you know, I have established so many industries and institutions and I don't have enough competent people to man them. Many of the people who can do, do this are in the opposition. And that was a while later I found the only way out was to have a one-party state. So we all belong. His predicament did not end there. He went ahead and implemented the Preventive Detention Act this gave him power to detain anyone he deemed a threat without a trial. All his bills were passed through Parliament, even preventive detention bill. He didn't just get up and say, I, Kwame Nkrumah, from today, I'm having this law. No. He went through the process, went to Parliament, and Parliament passed the preventive detention bill. The elite in those days were against this dictatorial type of governance. And so, the opposition to Kwame Nkrumah increased. How can the person who led us to struggle for the right to elect our own leaders become a dictator? The person who led us in struggle to assert our rights as human beings become a dictator? Strange, strange logic, strange definitions. It was his own people, his own government, that gave him away because he was becoming a nuisance. As Nkrumah walked in the gardens of Flagstaff House, which served as his residence, he was the target of a failed assassination attempt. One day he was walking from his office, you know, from his house to his office, and a policeman opened fire on him. What was he to do with that policeman? Give him a bouquet of flowers and kiss him on the cheeks for attempting to assassinate him? I don't understand these noises about dictatorship. In August 1962, Kwame Nkrumah was returning from Upper Volta, present day Burkina Faso. Okay, so just to add that, Burkina Faso as it is today was previously part of Ghana. A grenade was concealed in a bouquet of flowers and given to a school pupil to present to him. It exploded. It was at that point that the bomb was thrown. It caught him. The girl who was going to present the flower died on the spot. The fragments went 
into all his body from his nipple down. Al-Haj Suleymana Yeremia was detained during Kwame Nkrumah's regime. He was accused of being behind the bombing. You in Ghana here just mentioned the bomb and my name will be one. When you look at the trial, I was not alone. If it were you, what are you going to say? Do you take it or you leave it? At that point too, it was a matter of death. When you assign it to me, I would not accept it. But there is every indication that says that I was the one. Ghana's economic condition started to get bleak. Cocoa, its primary export, had started experiencing a decline in the world market. Unemployment was on the rise. The state enterprises that were established soon collapsed and food prices increased. At one time, we had the highest per capita income in Africa. Ghana, for the first time, was rationing soup, milk, and other things that we were buying at the Accra Sports Stadium. That was not befitting of Ghana. Meanwhile, Nkrumah funded Guinea with 10 million pounds from Ghana's coffers, making this the worst economic blunder of that time. Guinea had to be told that they have support. And uh, the all Africa should know that we are together, that we should help each other. So to me, it wasn't the amount of money, a symbolic gesture of great import. His efforts to rescue Guinea did not in any way repair his already damaged reputation with the people of Ghana. And what that meant was even the most trusted friend in his government could end up being a threat. We cannot, under any circumstances, allow imperialists and new colonialists to interlock with traitors in our midst to deflect us from the path of duty and progress. On the 21st of February, 1966, President Kwame Nkrumah flew out of Accra on a plane bound for Hanoi, Vietnam. Ironically, he had gone on a peace mission, but in his own backyard, it was all but peaceful. Three days later, on the morning of 24th February, 1966, the self-proclaimed president for life, Osaji for Kwame Nkrumah, was ousted in a military coup. The overthrow of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. I'd never seen such an explosion of joy. We were in prison when we heard that Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown. Come and see in the prison. People were weeping, weeping because of joy. The prison was full. As for people who died there, oh, you cannot count them. But they were weeping when they heard Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown. Oh, we remember the, full, the, the whole day, the whole uh, event. Um, as I said, I was a little over five, so uh, mercifully, our father was not in town. He was out of the country. And uh, we woke up at the sound of gunshots. Because of my age, I wasn't aware of what was going on. But she said I was then asking the, the soldiers who used to guard the presidential palace, that's Flagstaff House, uh, why they were not saluting me on that morning. Because <laughs> I was not aware of what was going on, that they were overthrowing, uh, overthrowing Nkrumah. I remember mother, the first thing she did, two things she did, in fact. One, she told us to pray. And we prayed. Remember, we knelt down and praying. 
when we finished, she said, okay, now even if they fire at you, nothing will happen to you. Ghana is passing through a revolutionary period. The Americans did not like Nkrumah because of the regime he was trying to uh, implant in Ghana, which may encourage other African states to do the same, and also because of the help he was given to African countries to be that independent. Uh, I used to hear KB Asante talk about the CIA. Of course, it was not like the CIA just came and jumped in. No. So it didn't matter where the support came from. From the CPP, they were prepared to grab it. In Ghana, we have a, a, a proverb or a saying that when the bird stays too long on the tree, it invites a stone. He went into exile in Guinea, where his friend and liberation comrade, Sekou Toure, gave him refuge and made him co-president. In April of 1972, Kwame Nkrumah drew his last breath in a hospital in Bucharest, Romania. Until he met his death, Kwame Nkrumah had survived five assassination attempts, and that is why the phrase, Kwame Nkrumah never dies, was coined. Earlier in the day, we were told that our father would be coming home. Yes, and of course, we were excited. Uh, and we all dressed in our finest clothes. Yes, and you're right. Yes, I remember our mother looking particularly good in her chiffon dress. And by the end of the day, we, an envoy came with this unbelievable news that our father had passed on. So according to the records, he died of cancer. But his, um, a few people who were close to him uh, in Guinea uh, are also saying that he could have been poisoned. Many Guineans, however, blame this on the West. He has fought until the last of his life. Because all the days that God did, all the complots are true. On vous dira, c'est pas vrai, c'était vrai. C'était ourdi par le camp occidental globalement pris. There was no a reaction to his death. It is America Cabral who said that Nkrumah died out of a cancer of betrayal, and there was a lot of betrayal in Nkrumah's days. Quand nous viennent pas, nous affirmer. I, Robert Gabriel Mugabe, do swear. People who say Kwame Nkrumah is good and practicing his ideology, I would say Mugabe. Mugabe was grateful to Kwame Nkrumah. But look at Mugabe's style of government. Is it successful? That is the true Nkrumahist, a pan-Africanist who believes in the true identity of the African. Yes, it's good. But practically, Kwame Nkrumah went down the books of history as the firebrand in Africa's liberation struggle. His vision for a United States of Africa continues to be realized. The reality is that they didn't stay on. Madiba is gone. Nkrumah is gone. Sekuturi is gone. Samora Marshall is gone. Nasser of Egypt is gone. That is our reality. Our tax 
is to create a new core of leaders, visionary leaders, leaders who want to see Africa free, leaders who want to help Africans to develop confidence in themselves, in their culture, in the food they eat, in the way they dress, in the way they walk, and the way they talk. Leaders who want to encourage Africans to take control of their own resources. We need to engineer those new leaders. That is the tax. I've told you he was a fine man. Nkrumah was dedicated to politics. He loved the nation. He loved Africa. He married, he married Africa. He lived and died in politics. The Africa we have today is the legacy he left behind and a constant reminder that indeed, Kwame Nkrumah never dies. There it is, explorers. This will be the end of part two of the Untold Truth about Africa. In our next video, we'll look at what became of Ghana after the death of one of the bravest men Africa will ever know and the emergence of a new form of governance in Ghana. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notification to be notified when I upload the next video. And until next time, bye!